So my name is Tom Hutchinson. I'm an engineer with the Tri-College Libraries. That's uh, Bryn Mawr, Haverford, and Swarthmore Colleges. Um, there are three small liberal arts colleges outside of uh, Philadelphia. All right. And so today I wanted to talk about um, preservation, um, the, the technical aspects. Um, I know preservation is, is largely a non-technical issue. Um, it's organizational and financial. Um, still, there's many, you know, technology-related decisions. Um, and even if you're following the, the strictest guidelines, uh, there's still, it's not clear how to do everything. Um, there's also pretty fuzzy boundaries. Um, some technology decisions involved in preservation quickly bleed into um, other areas, you know, certainly uh, repositories come up very quickly, and then also just your kind of technology in general. Um, so I'm going to lay out uh, a few just simple ideas and try to motivate them, and then apply those uh, like simple principles to some situations and see see how far it gets us. Um, so my main underlying theme is um, just the Unix philosophy uh, there um, a you know big big idea they have is let's make um, solve problems as broadly as possible uh, with with very narrow uh, solutions um, that are constrained they do one thing and one thing well and hopefully it's even simple and that not just simple to use but simply implemented um, they're big on good is better than you know all-encompassing um, let's just make something work pretty well um, so this this narrow constraint problem um, we see in a tool like grep um, you know we're we're searching text it does this kind of pattern matching really well and that's it nothing else um, but it's also, we can apply this to any text, um, so it's not such a bad utility. Um, we also see this, you know, in more of our world with something like Fedora. Um, you know, we're solving a pretty narrow problem. Um, it doesn't do too much. They're very disciplined about not adding things, so you have, most people have some other software sitting on top. Because um, we're just solving some, some simple problems and we're composing those solutions together. Um, and we can see this composed together simple pieces in your regular web app. Um, so most of our apps have a web server like Apache, a database like Postgres, um, a search engine like Solar. And so, you know, now we're, we're getting out of the realm of solving some kind of library problem, some kind of preservation problem, and we're just, you know, so, uh, farming it out to just all people who need to store and retrieve data, you know, that's a big win. You know, we can just use these these basic building blocks and kind of plug them together and that works, you know, pretty well. Um, it also lets us reuse our skills. Um, this is this is how we're set up. We actually try to line up all our applications so they have a lot of overlap. Um, and so the application specific stuff we try to keep really small. Um, and this. This works out in practice, especially we're a small team, so we're using some, some solutions. Works out pretty well. Um, okay, so another principle is there's no magic. Um, you know, the, the salespeople, they try to tell you there is. You know, ooh, got a fancy thing. But, you know, there's, there's also no magic. There's a lot of hype. You know, fashion is big. Uh, oh, did you you know see this new thing? Let's get into it. It's, there's a lot of excitement around um, certain products. Um, also, you know, people can fall into a trap of thinking, oh, there's one super technology that'll solve all our problems. Um, you know, we can we can fill out the matrix and it checks every box, so it's going to be the super thing. Uh, keep let's just add more stuff in it. Um, you know, in in practice, you know, I argue that's not always the best way to go. Okay, so um, yeah, now I'm gonna have a side rant on the cloud um, because this is coming up in a lot of our technology decisions is, you know, local hosting, cloud hosting. Uh, we're a consortia, uh, so um, 
you know, we have three different IT departments. Um, one, we the libraries uh, work very closely with, but the other two, they're still, you know, very present at our colleges. Um, you know, and I hear a lot of different reasons for, for using the cloud. Um, I, you know, no one ever gets fired for putting something on Amazon, you know, but it is a good line item to say, oh, I, you know, uh, directed us in our transition, you know, to the cloud. Uh, you know, that sounds pretty good. Um, you know, and, and it's not it's not bad stuff. Um, you know, and a lot of cloud usage comes, and just a lot of our um, technology, you know, enthusiasm is coming out of this big startup culture. Um, we have the tail end of a big tech bubble boom. Um, and there's a lot of enthusiasm, but a st I cringe every time I hear a library should be run like a startup. That is a garbage idea. Um, you know, we are so much better than sweatshops. Uh, and we have things that they don't have. Um, you know, they're, they're just forces behind them are just really different. So they start with nothing, literally. Maybe a few people, maybe a little money. Um, they have no code, no staff, no nothing. Um, and they want to get big. They want to go from really small to really big. So right from the start, they're thinking scalable. Um, so they're going to use weird cloud technologies, but because the, the cloud is weird. Things are different there. We're thinking how to scale really well. And so, you know, we don't have a normal regular database. We don't have a regular normal file store. Everything's all kind of weird. Um, and But you, it's kind of a price you pay to be able to scale. So for right out of the gate, they're building an app from scratch using scalable technologies, and they're willing to pay the price. Um, and they really, it's great for them because they can start with very few resources, and so their costs are low in the beginning. And then they want to be scaling up a good one, you know, exponentially for a while. Um, you know, and that's just kind of different. You know, our needs are much more stable. Um, you know, we want to have extra capacity to, um, you know, take on a new big collection that drops out of the sky, you know, that's always good. We want to be able to, to spin stuff up and try things out, but, um, you know, but we're not scaling up a thousand times and then another thousand, you know, just, just I don't know, maybe you are, but our, our needs are, are much more modest. Um, you know, the cloud, so for a startup, it works, it works great. Uh, it's these are good technologies to be using for them, um, and it, it's like a, a good fit. They really need a lot of dynamicism, and they're willing to pay high price for how they architect their applications and also how they orchestrate. Because they want that scaling to be automatic and dynamic, and um, so there's a they're willing to put in the cost of a lot of tooling too. Um, you know, cloud's also really good if you're running at the data center level. Um, you know, you're Netflix, and it might make more sense to farm that out to even a bigger player. Um, you know, so, but, you know, I don't know, that's not me. Um, so let's go over our recent decision that we're making in the Trico. Um, you know, uh, the, so the principle here is use what you have. So we were, um, looking and evaluating, oh, what do we even have? Um, you know, because we're thinking about, oh, let's do maybe Amazon or, you know, one of those other guys or, you know, but let's let's kind of evaluate what, what we have internally. Um, well, we have land and server rooms, power, cooling, redundant high-speed internet, servers, a virtual ASIM stack, storage hardware, a backup system, you know, kind of a lot of stuff. Um, you know, we also have staffing, um, you know, we have IT staff and they keep our infrastructure up. There's the basics like network availability, you know, 24 seven. Um, we have a little web development team. It's not exactly what we do, but, uh, close enough. Uh, we also have a lot of librarians. Um, you know, they're super knowledgeable and excited and want to do stuff. Um, how can we take advantage of all these these resources, both uh, the the physical infrastructure and the the people? Um, so for us, uh, we were looking to set up a new repository and set up some preservation. Um, and so initially, we thought like cloud, 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 cloud. 
Um, but now we're thinking, oh, maybe we should like double down on what we have, you know, local infrastructure, um, local management, uh, and save a bunch of money. Um, and, but still have the capacity and nimbleness to spin things up, uh, toss storage at problems. Um, you know, we can, we can still be dynamic up to a point. Um, so, and we found for us, um, since we already have these other very high fixed costs that we're going to pay no matter what, um, the additional costs are, are low compared to the, um, you know, we're thought to be quite low cloud prices. Um, you know, actually also that's a point is we really want to take advantage of the pricing war on the cloud, um, especially on the storage side. There have been a very aggressive price wars. Um, and most recently, you know, Oracle was getting into it and they were trying to undercut. And, you know, you get the Google and Microsoft and Amazon all being very aggressive on, on pricing and having deep pockets to do that. Um, and so, you know, maybe we should take advantage of that. You know, cheap storage, that sounds pretty good. Um, but we should watch out, have an exit strategy. What about, you know, maybe the prices probably are going to stop dropping radically, but, you know, it wouldn't be so wild if they rose in a similarly um, fast manner as they fell. Um, and we'll be, will we be ready then? You know, that's one, one thing I worry about with cloud stuff is um, if you don't use it like a dumb commodity and you start using all their fancy tools, which are, you know, great technologies, you're, they get really have your hooks in you um, and you're really locked into th that vendor and it's very, uh, you know, expensive to switch out technology-wise. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to expand out our, our local storage and then have another copy of our data locally and then have it, that backed up in our backup system. And then we're going to stick in the dark cloud um, a preservation copy of our assets and metadata. Um, but we're, you know, for us it made sense to, to go local heavily. You know, in my vision for the, the next level of what, you know, local infrastructure looks like, is not just doing this with one IT department that we're working closely with, but we have three colleges, we have three IT departments. What if they each had a copy of our data? Um, this actually got a, a lot of pushback um, because of uh, NDSA guidelines, you know, geographic dispersion. Our colleges are close together. Um, you know, to me, this is kind of overly rigid. Um, if I don't know, the greater Philadelphia area is destroyed. I mean, I don't know, maybe that's a, a bigger problem. Um, and we can still uh, hedge by having these cheap uh, dark copies offsite. So that's that's what I would go through. It's like each, each college have a, its own co a copy of our data, and then we have some kind of cheap offsite that we don't use that much. Um, also, this doing local storage is great because we can do all the access we want. We can do all our preservation activities without thinking about, oh, how much is this going to cost to, to check our, our files? Um, so that can be a t continuous process um, for free, which is pretty nice. Okay. Okay. Um, shoot, I had a couple question and answers. Um, someone, maybe those are further. Anyway, one question I had was, um, where should everything live? We're trying to figure out um, where should preservation be? Uh, you know, we were thinking about preservation storage. We're thinking about maybe the repositories. Um, you know, what? where should that stuff go? Let's see, what do I have? Okay. Um, and so with respect to built into the storage, you know, that sounds pretty appealing. Um, you know, we're trying out, we're trying out DuraCloud, you know, it's a good product. Um, there's, there's other ones out there that, um, you know, pretty nice. They have a lot of, some other ones even more featureful. Um, you know, DuraCloud I also like, it has good in integrations with uh, DSpace and Fedora, but um, 
To me, I'm not so big on that because I want storage to be a dumb commodity. Um, you know, I don't really want to care what it is specifically and want to be able to move um, easily across, across any kind of storage. So, you know, to me, when I hear preservation storage, that sounds expensive uh, and not letting me choose whatever storage technology I want. Um, so it sounds restrictive. Uh, you know, I was also thinking about how about in the repositories? Um, there, it, it kind of makes sense, right? Well, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I have a lot of different repositories, um, and I also have lots of files that aren't in repositories. Um, so, you know, I do highly support a repository supporting preservation operations. You know, you should be able to say, oh, run the fixity checks on all my assets. You know, that should be, you know, just press a button. Um, so I, I'm not against it going in there, but ideally I would have preservation as its own separate layer um, that plugs into repositories, plugs into bare files, um, and that could, you know, one central place to, to drive those operations and to do organization. Um, and this doesn't even have to be a specific technology. It could be a spreadsheet and some, you know, scripts or something. You know, DIY gets you pretty far. Um, you know, we get, we get, look how far we get with hashes and backups. You know, that's not a lot of technology, but we can kind of do at least this losing the bits part of preservation. Not, a, you know, not everything else, uh, but um, so, so I like, I like to be able to just plug into our pools of storage, plug into our repositories. Um, but have just one one place, and really, I'm, um, you know, one thing where I, I see a lot of places grappling with um, is you know, maybe they've been doing preservation for a while, but um, they haven't necessarily gone through multiple generations of a preservation system. So how to to keep that going um, through different repositories, as a for instance, um, you know. So I think that. Keeping it as its own kind of separate thing is, isn't the worst. Um, okay, so now this is the, the rant portion of my talk. Um, hashtag rant for lib. Um, so just one, one thing I think is to build uh, bridge people. You know, a lot of these navigating the preservation waters, um, you know, I've had these different camps of the, the IT folks and the librarians. And really, they're, they're oftentimes I find they're talking about the same kinds of things, but you know they have sort of different languages and um, you know different levels of comfort with each other. Um, so just building up these bridge people who can kind of communicate what we're trying to do is is crucial. Um, that's way more important than you know our specific technologies. Um, another little tidbit is plan for anything failing. Um, you know, we have a really thought out of, you know, like what if a hard drive fails? Okay, we got that covered. Or, you know, what if one file gets corrupted? Okay, okay, no problem. But, um, you know, think about other stuff. You know, your checksum, that's a file too. You know, are you gonna be okay if that goes bad? Will you be able to realize? Um, you know, do you have some other kind of metadata, a database or some headers somewhere? Um, you know, just be on, be on the lookout for just any particular component failing in your ecosystem, and hopefully for a bunch of them to fail at the same time, because that's what happens. Um, okay, well, we did that. Oh, this is all my rants already, I guess. Okay. Um, okay, here's a question I've seen come up. Um, you know, a Amazon. You know, aren't they doing hashes on hashes on hashes? Isn't that preservation? Can't we just like do that? Or uh, isn't like a checkbox we can click somewhere on something? Uh, no, absolutely not. That is not preservation. Uh, you know, we should pick technologies that prevent errors. You know, so I would pick a, a ZFS. I pick an error correcting memory. You know, I pick an S3. Um, but at the end of the day, I still think about them as just dumb holders of files. 
and I think of them as fragile. Um, you know, we want to do everything independently. I want it tangible to be able to hold in my hand. Um, you know, so a checksum built into the file system, that's, that's good. Um, you know, we should be using those modern file system technologies. Uh, but we want to do all our preservation ourselves. It should be independent and verifiable. You know, we want to leave a, a good paper trail. Okay. Okay, another rant. Um, talk to your CS department. <coughs> um, you know, they've, a lot of the problems involved in preservation, you know, they've been thinking about from before there was physical computers. They just thought of the idea of, of these problems. You know, how, how much information can you store? How do you fix errors? Um, just this simple stuff. Uh, they, you know, the computer science, electrical engineering, they have a, a lot of experience. Um, and they call these things, <coughs> uh, things like coding theory, uh, information theory, uh, Claude Shannon, people like them. Um, you know, so these were things like, I don't know, 40s, 50s, 60s kind of problems that were solved um, and put into practice in software often, you know, then or but maybe 20, 30 years. So it's not, you know, groundbreaking stuff. Um, another opinion, you know, know your materials. Just like if you're working with a piece of paper and doing conservation, um, you know, we work with text a lot. Well, you might want to know a little bit about text. It's not that hard. Um, you know, figuring out how to debug the tofu problem. You get that little square tofu character, like, oh, what happened? Um, well, you know, we can know about like ASCII and those other kind of regional encodings. I recommend knowing about UTF-8. You know, just those two get you very far. Um, even just know knowing a text encoding exists, the other kind of text encoding, not the librarian kind, but the um, at the lower level. Um, yeah, just even knowing that's a thing is, is that very helpful? Um, we can also up our game in fixity checks. Um, you know, checksums, hashes, those are good. You know, that plus backups kind of does a lot. Um, you know, it's not perfect though. Um, so a problem with a checksum is you know, how can you tell if it's bad? You know, it doesn't match the file. Which one is the bad one? I don't know. We look for the backup and compare. Hopefully a couple backups and we do a consensus. Um, but actually we can, we can have a, a kind of, you know, run a put big file through a program and it spits out a little code and we can have properties like, oh, we always know that code is well formed or not. Um, so we would be able to detect if the code is wrong. Um, we can store redundant information in the code. Um, so this is called error correction. So we can have kind of self-healing files. Um, so it's not, uh, you know, this is a big problem. You know, with a physical piece of paper, you tear the corner off, you can still read the rest. But a lot of times with a file, you mess up one little part, the whole thing is bad. Um, well, we can store redundant information. Our code can be a little bit big. Um, so if we store 10% redundant information, we would be able to recover from 10% disappearing. Um, and if it was more than that, we would still be able to detect it had gone wrong. Um, you know, I, I think the, the codes we really want might not exist yet, but there's very usable software right out of the box today. Um, a bunch of people are talking about P-Archive or uh, part two. Um, last year, Jeff Spees did a talk. Um, that was one of the technologies he mentioned. Um, you know, you hear it whispered, and uh, you know, maybe on Paysig or um, so. This is you know, twenty-year-old software and sixty-year-old problems. Uh, so we can use that right out of the box. And the same kind of technology that's in RAID or ZFS or an error correcting memory. Um, where you have just little redundant information, so if some of it goes bad, we can kind of self-heal. Um, let's see. All right, well, um, you know, I have, I have plenty of other, you know, rants and hot air, but, um, you know, I'd like to open things up for, for questions. Thank you.